In this session, we will try to discuss about spaces of hand or facial spaces of hand. In the palmar aspect and in the dorsal aspect, some spaces are there. Those spaces are lined by fascia. That's what those spaces what we are calling facial spaces of hand. These spaces surgically very significant because they may be infected and distended with pus. So, we have to drain that pus. Right? So, if you want to drain that pus, we should know boundaries of those spaces. That's what in this session we are going to discuss in detail about facial spaces of hand. These are divided into different spaces. One is palmar space. Palmar space. That means spaces which are present in the palmar aspect. They are further divided into pulp space, mid palmar space, mid palmar space and thinner space. Thinner space. Right? So, these are the spaces which are present in the palmar aspect. Then, dorsal spaces. That means, spaces which are present in the dorsal aspect. Dorsal spaces. Right? So, these are also two in number. Dorsal subcutaneous. Dorsal subcutaneous space. Then, dorsal subaponeurotic. Dorsal subaponeurotic space. Right? Then, not only in the palmar aspect and the dorsal aspect of the hand, one space will be present in the lower part of forearm also. That space what we are calling forearm space of parona. Forearm space of parona. Forearm space of parona. Right? First we will discuss about pulp space and forearm space of parona because they needs separate diagram. But for remaining all spaces, if you take one diagram, that will be sufficient to explain all the spaces. Right? That's what first we will discuss about pulp space. Pulp space. I am drawing one diagram here. This part, this part I am going to draw here in the horizontal manner. This is finger and this is nail, this is nail bed, this is the dorsal aspect, this is palmar aspect and this is dorsal aspect. Within this, bone will be present. Is it or not? What is that bone? Terminal phalanx. Is it? So, this is terminal phalanx. Right? And here, middle phalanx. Of course, here, joint. Distal interphalangeal joint. And here, one artery is passing to supply digits. So, what is that artery? Digital artery. Before that, we should draw one tendon which is attaching to the base of terminal phalanx. What is this tendon? Long flexor tendon. Flexor digitorum profundus tendon. Is it? But in case of thumb, flexor pollicis is longest tendon. Is it? So, this tendon is flexor digitorum profundus tendon. Over that, we can form digital artery. Of course, digital nerves also will be present. This artery supplying to the phalanx. Is it or not? This is pulp space. Actually, these are pulps. Pulps of fingers. So, this space, what we are calling pulp space. This space bounded anteriorly by skin, posteriorly by periosteum of the terminal phalanx. Some fibrous septa extending from skin to the periosteum. Like this, fibrous septa are connecting skin to the periosteum of terminal phalanx. Is it? So, this space, that means pulp space divided into numerous tight compartments. Numerous tight compartments are interceptal compartments. These are interceptal compartments. These interceptal compartments are filled with fat or fibro fatty tissue. So, here 
these interceptor compartments are filled with fat is it a fibro fatty tissue if you want to take the transfer section of the pulp space this is pulp space and this is nail bed here nail this is nail bed and here nail cut section of nail right and here what is there terminal phalanx so this is terminal phalanx and what are these radiating fibrous septa radiating fibrous septa connecting periosteum of terminal phalanx to the skin right so these are radiating fibrous septa so because of these radiating fibrous septa pulp space divided into numerous interceptal compartments or numerous tight compartments these tight compartments are filled with fat these are fibrous septa is it through these fibrous septa digital arteries are passing right so through this septa digital arteries are passing so these are digital arteries clear along with digital arteries digital nerves also passing so these are digital nerves digital arteries and digital nerves you must be confused because in the palm digital arteries are passing superficial to the digital nerves but when they reaches to the digits nerves become superficial arteries become deep to facilitate more sensations to the tips of the fingers right so that's what nerves are superficial arteries are deep clear so this is the transfer section of finger pulp or pulp space very simple pulps of fingers and thumb divided into different fibrous septa so that pulp will be divided into numerous interceptal tight compartments these compartments are filled with fibro fatty tissue through this fibro septa digital nerves and arteries are passing here we should discuss one thing see here if you divide the terminal phalanx into distal 4/5 and proximal 1/5 distal 4/5 supplied by arteries which are passing through the fibro septa but proximal 1/5 supplied by artery which is not passing through the fibro septa right this is clinically important we have to remember this this is the normal anatomy of pulp space now we will see applied aspect of pulp space pulp space may infected by the virus what is that virus called herpes herpes simplex of course herpes simplex having two types type 1 and type 2 both may infect the pulp space which leads to accumulation of pus within the tight compartments that means abscess or accumulation of pus in the tight compartments because they are separated by fibrous septa if there is accumulation of pus there will be increasing the tension because of increased tension in the tight compartments patient feel throbbing pain and you can observe swelling and redness and he will feel itching over that and you can observe some blisters also these are the clinical features of infected pulp space what is that condition called witlow that condition what we are calling witlow witlow or herpetic witlow because this infection because of herpes simplex that's what this witlow or this infection what we are calling herpetic witlow in untreated cases because of increased tension in the tight compartments there will be occlusion of these blood vessels because they are passing through the fibrous septa right if there is increased tension there will be occlusion or compression of these blood vessels which leads to avascular necrosis of distal 4/5 but proximal 1/5 is escaping why because proximal 1/5 of terminal phalanx supplied by artery which is not passing through the fibrous septa that's what this part is escaping now to drain that pus what you have to do that means where you have to give incision if you make incision like this after all you can open only one compartment right so if you want to open all compartments you have to make incision 
here. You have to make incision here, like this. Posterior to the digital arteries and nerves to avoid injury to the digital nerves and vessels because digital nerves are very important for the tactile sensation because hand is tactile organ that's what we have to make incision posterior to the digital vessels and nerves and if you press like this you can drain the pus which is present in the pulp space so this is how you have to drain the pus in the pulp space now we'll discuss about forearm space of parona it is space present in the lower part of forearm or proximal to the flexor retinaculum. It is present in between the one quadrangular muscle which is taking origin from the lower end of ulna from here and it is inserting to where? It is inserting to the radius. What is this muscle? Pronator quadratus. Is it or not? So this is pronator quadratus. Anterior to the pronator quadratus, you can find long flexor tendons. That means tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis. Right? So, now we can observe some space or some facial lined space which is present in between the pronator quadratus posteriorly, long flexor tendons anteriorly. Anterior boundary formed by long flexor tendons. That means tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and tendons of flexor digitorum profundus then posteriorly pronator quadratus right then proximally proximally it extends up to oblique origin of flexor digitorum superficialis actually this is oblique origin of flexor digitorum superficialis right proximally it is extending up to the oblique origin of flexor digitorum superficialis then distally it is extending up to the flexor retinaculum right now we know boundaries of forearm space of parona recollect once again anteriorly flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis tendons posteriorly pronator quadratus proximally it is extending up to the oblique origin of flexor digitorum superficialis Distal it is extending up to the flexor retinaculum. Actually, ulnar bursa and radial bursa protrude into the forearm space of parona. And mid palmar space and thinar space, they may also communicate with the forearm space of parona. So, this is about forearm space of parona. If this space is infected, pus will be accumulated in the space. So, where you have to drain? You have to make incision along the lateral border of forearm and we have to drain the pus from the forearm space of parona right so that's it about forearm space now what are remaining mid palmar space thinar space and dorsal spaces right for that we have to take the cut section of hand that diagram i will try to draw there draw along with me because this diagram only we are going to draw in the examination here i am taking the cut section so this is first metacarpal bone, this is second metacarpal bone, this is third metacarpal, this is fourth and this is fifth metacarpal. These are metacarpal bones. As we discussed in the Shishna nerves of palm, here one eminence will be there. What is this eminence? This is thinar eminence and here another eminence will be there. What is this eminence? Hypothenar eminence. So, this is hypothenar eminence. This is thinar eminence. Is it? I will draw with red color only. So, this is hypothenar eminence and this is thinar eminence. Right? So, thinar eminence made up of three muscles and hypothenar eminence made up of three muscles. That we know and we have discussed even. Right? So, this is thinar and this is hypothenar eminence. Then, this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth metacarpal bone. In between the metacarpal bones, we can found intrasse muscles. Is it or not? So, this is first dorsal intrasse and this is second dorsal intrasse, third dorsal intrasse. 
and this is fourth dorsal interosseal. Then we have to draw palmar interosseal also. Fourth palmar interosseal, third palmar interosseal. This is second palmar interosseal, and here first palmar interosseal. Then one muscle will be taking origin from the anterior aspect or palmar surface of third metacarpal bone. What is that muscle? Transverse head of adductor pollicis. So this is transverse head of adductor pollicis. Then if you go further anteriorly, what you can found? You can found tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis. These are long flexor tendons, right? Flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus tendons. And here one more tendon will be there. What is the tendon which is going to the thumb? Flexor pollicis longus, right? Then these are flexor digitorum profundus tendons. So, lumbricals muscles will be taking origin from these tendons. So, this is fourth lumbrical, this is third lumbrical, this is second lumbrical and here first lumbrical. Anterior to the long flexor tendons, you can found digital nerves, is it? So, these are digital nerves. So, these are digital nerves. Then anterior to the digital nerves, superficial palmar arch. Superficial palmar arch. Anterior to the superficial palmar arch, what will be present? You can found aponeurosis. What is that aponeurosis? Palmar aponeurosis. So this is palmar aponeurosis. Recollect your memory if at all it is there. As we have discussed in the palmar aponeurosis. This is medial margin of palmar aponeurosis and this is lateral margin of palmar aponeurosis. Medial margin of palmar aponeurosis will give one septa which is extending from the medial margin of palmar aponeurosis to the fifth metacarpal bone. So, this is fibrous septa which is extending from the medial margin, medial margin of palmar aponeurosis to the fifth metacarpal bone. In the same manner, Lateral margin of palmar aponeurosis gives fibrous septa extending from the lateral margin of palmar aponeurosis to the first metacarpal bone. So, this is palmar septum. Which palmar septum? This is medial palmar septum and this is lateral palmar septum. They are connecting margins of palmar aponeurosis to the fifth and first metacarpal bone correspondingly. After palmar aponeurosis, what will be present? Superficial fascia. Is it? So, here superficial fascia. So, this is superficial fascia. Is it? Actually, these muscles, that means thinar muscles and hypothenar muscles also covered by fascia. Is it or not? So, this is fascia which is covering the hypothenar eminence. This is palmar aponeurosis. And if you observe in the dorsal aspect, you can found extensor tendons. Is it? So, these are extensor tendons. These are extensor tendons. These extensor tendons connected with one another by aponeurosis. So, here this is aponeurosis connecting the extensor tendons. So, this is how tendons will be arranged in the dorsal aspect. Clear? Then after palmar aponeurosis, here we have drawn superficial fascia, right? That superficial fascia will be present around the hand, is it or not? So, let me draw superficial fascia around the hand. So, this is superficial fascia, right? After superficial fascia, what will be present? Skin. So, let me draw the skin, right? 
So this is skin. Now we know all the structures what we have drawn here. These are long flexor tendons. These long flexor tendons are surrounded by what? Ulnar bursa. And what is this tendon? Tendon of flexor pollicis longus. It is surrounded by radial bursa. Is it? Let me draw adductor pollicis little smaller so that we can see the spaces clearly. So this is the section. If you observe here, in between the long flexor tendons and the metacarpal bones and the interosseous muscles, here we can form some space. This space what we are calling palmar space, right? That means anteriorly long flexor tendons, posteriorly interosseous muscles and adductor pollicis, right? So here totally this is the space. This space what we are calling palmar space. That palmar space further divides into mid palmar space and thinner space. See here, this is totally palmar space. Then how palmar space will be divided into mid palmar space and thinner space? See here, one intermediate septum which is extending from the fascia which is covering the long flexor tendons. That means from here, one septum will be extending and attaching to the palmar surface of third metacarpal bone. So, this is intermediate septum. So, this is the space. This is the space which is present in between the long flexor tendons anteriorly, metacarpal bones and their interosseous muscles and adductor pollicis posteriorly. Right? So, this space what we are calling palmar space. That palmar space further divided into mid palmar space and thinner space. By what? By this intermediate septum. See, this is intermediate septum separating the mid palmar space with the thinner space. Right? So, this is present towards the thinner aspect. That is what this space is thinner space and this is mid palmar space. Clear? Now, we will see the boundaries of thinner space and mid palmar space. I hope you understood the structures what I have drawn there. Now we will see mid palmar space, mid palmar space present in the medial aspect of halo of the palm, halo of the palm will be present in between the thinner eminence and hypothenar eminence, right. So this is halo, if you divide the halo into medial part and lateral part, within the medial part we can form mid palmar space, right. So this is situation and it is triangular in shape. Now we know where it is present and what is the shape of it. Then from where to where it is extending? It is extending proximally from the plexar etnoculum distally to the distal palmar crease. What is this crease? Distal palmar crease and this is proximal transverse crease. Is it or not? So this space that means mid palmar space extending from proximally flexor etnoculum and distally up to distal palmar crease. That means up to here it is extending. Is it? So this space is mid palmar space. Right? This mid palmar space proximally it may communicate with the forearm space of Perona. And distally it continues with the facial sheath, facial sheath of lumbricals. That means communicating with the lumbrical canals, lumbrical canals of third and fourth lumbricals and a connected with second lumbrical canal also. Actually this is vary from textbook to textbook. So this is mid palmar space, very simple mid palmar space located in the medial part of halo of palm then extend proximally flexor etnoculum. Actually it is closed underneath the flexor etnoculum. But it may communicate with the forearm space of Perona. Then distally it is extending up to the distal palm arteries. From there it will communicate with the third and fourth lumbrical canals or facial sheaths of lumbricals. Now we know location, shape and extent. Right? Then what are the boundaries? Boundaries are very simple. We can see in this diagram. 
this is anterior this is posterior is it all these are anterior boundaries all these are posterior boundaries right if you wanted to say specifically anteriorly tendons of middle finger ring finger and little finger and their synovial sheaths right then lumbricals which lumbricals second third and fourth lumbricals then if you wanted to tell still more anteriorly digital nerves superficial palmar arch and palmar aponeurosis is it so these are anterior boundaries very simple anteriorly tendons of middle finger ring finger and little finger and their synovial sheaths second third and fourth lumbricals along with that you can write palmar aponeurosis also right so these are anterior boundaries then posterior boundaries see here these are the intrasay muscles right so these intrasay muscles are covered by fascia is it or not so fascia covering the third fourth fifth metacarpal bones and intrasay muscles is it so this is posterior boundary so now we have seen anterior and posterior boundaries then what are lateral and medial boundaries see here this is medial side and this is lateral side that we know so for this space this is lateral boundary this is medial boundary so medially what is the septum medial palmar septum and laterally what is the septum intermediate septum so medially medial palmar septum laterally intermediate septum right so this is about mid palmar space recollect once again very simple for explanation i took this much time for revision it takes very less time it is present in the medial aspect of halo of the palm and it is extending from flexor retinaculum proximally distally distal palmar crease proximally it may communicates with the forearm space of parona distally it continues with the lumbrical canals or facial sheaths of third and fourth lumbricals right then anterior boundary formed by tendons of middle finger ring finger and little finger and their synovial sheaths second third and fourth lumbricals along with that you can write palmar aponeurosis right so these are anterior boundaries then posterior boundaries fascia which is covering third fourth fifth metacarpal bones and intrasay muscles medially medial palmar septum laterally intermediate septum that is about mid palmar space now if there is infection what will happen as we said earlier accumulation of pus right we have to drain the pus where we have to give incision we have to give incision at the third and fourth web spaces so here these are third and fourth web spaces we have to give incision here to drain pus from the mid palmar space right so that is about mid palmar then what do you have to discuss now thin r space thin r space is very easy after completion of mid palmar space because now you must got one idea that what are all the possible structures which forms the boundaries of thin r space thin r space present in the lateral part of halo of the palm then shape this is also triangular in shape right then extent proximally flexor retinaculum distally what is this crease proximal transverse palmar crease that means this crease right so this is proximal transverse palmar crease so distally it is extending up to the proximal transverse palmar crease then communications proximally it may communicates with the forearm space of parona then distally it will communicates with the canal of first lumbrical canal of first lumbrical now we know the location shape extent and communications location which is present in the lateral part of halo of the palm right extent proximal reflexor retinaculum distally proximal transverse palmar crease communications proximally it may communicates with the forearm space of parona distally it will communicates with the first lumbrical canal or facial sheath of first lumbrical now we have to see boundaries what are anterior boundaries what are posterior boundaries and what are the medial and lateral boundaries see here for this space what are the anterior boundaries see here anteriorly 
tendons of index finger, first lumbrical, palmar abnormalities, thin arm muscles. So these are structures which are present anterior to the thin arm space. Then posteriorly, what is this? Fascia which is covering the adductor pollicis. Actually, this is the transverse head of adductor pollicis, right? That adductor pollicis is covered by fascia, right? So fascia covering the adductor pollicis posteriorly. Then laterally, lateral palmar septum and tendon of flexor pollicis longus and radial bursa. Actually, radial bursa surrounding the tendon of flexor pollicis longus, right? So these two are the lateral boundaries. Medial boundary is intermediate septum. That's it. If there is accumulation of pus or infection of this space or infection of thin R space, where you have to give insertion, you have to give insertion at first web space. Here, you have to give insertion here. Clear? This is about thin R space. Now we'll see dorsal spaces. Dorsal spaces means here you can form two spaces. Here one space, here another space. Is it or not? See, this space is subcutaneous space. So, dorsal subcutaneous space. It is present in between the skin and the deep fascia. Actually, it is aponeurosis. This is the space which is present in between the skin and this aponeurosis. This space what we are calling subcutaneous space or dorsal subcutaneous space. Within this dorsal subcutaneous space, you can found dorsal venous arch. Is it dorsal venous arch and dorsal digital nerves of radial nerve and ulnar nerve, right? So these are the contents. Very simple. Boundaries are superficially skin, deeply deep fascia or aponeurosis. Then what are the contents? Dorsal venous arch and dorsal digital nerves of ulnar nerve and radial nerve, right? So that is about dorsal subcutaneous space. Then here, what is the space? Dorsal subaponeurotic space bounded superficially by extensor tendons and connecting aponeurosis, deeply by fascia, which is covering the metacarpal bones and intrasia muscles. Is it so? This space, what we are calling dorsal subaponeurotic space, then what are the contents which are present here? Tendons of extensor muscles and dorsal carpal arches. Is it? So, dorsal carpal arches you can form and you can form tendons of extensor muscles. Right? So, this is about subaponeurotic space. This subaponeurotic space will be infected because of spreading of infection from the palmar aspect to the dorsal aspect through the lymphatics. Right? So, that is about dorsal spaces. Right? If you wanted to know little more about this space, you can found one more space here behind the adductor pollicis. That space what we are calling retro adductor space. It is bounded anteriorly by adductor pollicis, posteriorly by first and second dorsal intrase, first palmar intrase and second metacarpal bone. That means here is the space. This is the space, right? This space bounded anteriorly by adductor pollicis, posteriorly by first and second dorsal intrase and first palmar intrase, second metacarpal bone. So this space is retro adductor space. Actually in the spaces of hand, we have to discuss about ulnar bursa and radial bursa also, but that we have already discussed in the flexor retinaculum session. That's what I didn't discuss here. But here I will tell you if there is infection of ulnar bursa, from where you have to drain? You have to make insertion along the lateral margin of hypothenar eminence right so if you make insertion here you can drain the pus or any accumulates which are present in the ulnar bursa if it is radial bursa you have to make insertion along the inner margin of thenar eminence so if you make insertion here you can drain the radial bursa right actually we have discussed in the flexor retinoculum session itself here Synovial sheaths will be there. What are these? Digital synovial sheaths. If there is infection of these digital synovial sheaths, they may protrude proximally and they may burst into the mid palmar space. If there is infection of ulnar bursa and radial bursa, they may burst into the forearm space of parona. This is about spaces of hand. I hope you understood. That's it for this session.